So good morning, everyone. We're very glad to be here today. Um, this is our second webinar for the day. Um, we opened our day in the Hebrew webinar, and when we're opening, now we're opening your day with the English version. Uh, we're very excited to be here. Um, during the event, we'll tell you about uh, the Nama initiation um, and, um, and dive deep dive into this call for proposals. Um, the participants from our side would be the, the pilot program team from the Innovation Authority and the NAMA initiative team. Um, I would like to invite uh, Sagi Dagan, the VP and head of growth division in the Israel Innovation Authority to open our webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, Sagi, to you. Hi, good evening to the Israeli guys and I guess it's good morning to California. Um, we are actually uh, presenting to you something that uh, I see quite exciting because, you know, we had uh, a few hundred years of roads on the ground here in Israel, I guess also around the world, and the roads in the sky were used by birds, so we are now taking over the sky and we've decided earlier uh, this year that we're going to open new roads. And you see, you know, we have on our logos, we're giving, uh, it's not only credits, we are just putting our partners. And, and the TVI alone is, is the company that basically put the main highway uh, within the center of, of Israel. And, and it just uh, looks like uh, we are now opening the new highways in, in the urban region of, of, of Israel, the urban regions which are very crowded and also uh, bringing a very interesting uh, environment that will be uh, uh, replicated in, in many other places in the world because we have uh, uh, a lot of opportunities here both on the side of, of the companies the, the economics and some uh, features of, of the region which are very uh, very interesting and i think that uh, what you see here is actually a, a joint government uh, of uh, initiative of, uh, of a few government organizations that are very uh, uh, agile, fast, uh, very, uh, you know, in, in a competitive way, looking at the, at the market in, in a very competitive point of view and, and building an ecosystem. Uh, and it's one of the interesting opportunities uh, uh, that I have seen in Israel in, in the innovation uh, ecosystem in the last few years. Uh, we will basically present to you uh, 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 two ways of, of joining. Uh, there's one way that we presented also earlier today uh, to the Israeli companies, and that's uh, uh, having uh, support of, of the government. But uh, there's also, but the entire initiative and the entire, uh, you know, uh, pilot and demonstrations are open also to international companies. We are not preferring uh, the Israelis on, on, on the sky. And we will also enable the international companies, whether they're coming with Israeli partners or in consortium or however they, they see the best way to, uh, to participate in the ecosystem that we are creating. And we have focused uh, an effort uh, which we're also putting uh, putting money uh, for for some of the companies, uh, an effort uh, for uh, we call it a fly together. Uh, so it's not only demonstrating each company on its own, but it's taking all the companies and letting them do a joint coordinated demonstration, which will be much more uh, I would say complicated on one side uh, because. You know, as you need to work under a UTM uh, in a real environment, UTM in real environment, and do real operational demonstrations, it's becoming on one side more complicated, but that's the good complication that we are trying to see, uh, both as government and as uh, industry, because we are basically bringing the future to the present. So we are putting uh, the future ecosystem and the and the structure of, of the future ecosystem, we're putting it today on the sky above us uh, with a joint effort that is actually being uh, 
uh, supported widely through the, uh, the Israeli ecosystem and players also from, you know, from even from, from the Ministry of Defense and the Air Force. Uh, so I think that uh, what, what you are all going to see in, in the coming uh, year, or year and, and two years, is uh, an exciting opportunities for uh, uh, flying drones with delivery. And, you know, in the future, we're all, all looking on starting to fly people, but let's start with delivery. Uh, and we're opening the Israeli sky and we're doing it in a very uh, smart way and cooperative way where the, the industry and the regulators are actually having a, a joint talk and joint uh, operations and demonstrations. And we're going to learn from each other. And that's how we are planning in Israel to go much faster than, than other countries and actually uh, bypass uh, uh, the leaders because we are uh, small and quick and we have very strong industry here. Um, and that's the way we are going to build the, you know, the competitive advantage that we are trying to create to the, uh, to the industry here and to the uh, local uh, economy. And I think it will be very interesting for you to hear, first of all, but even more to, to join and participate. So I hope you all enjoy the, the seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now I'll start our presentation. Um, I'll begin with introducing myself. My name is Daniela Partem, and I'm the head of the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution in the Israel Innovation Authority. Um, we'll have a, a, a short look at our center in the, soon, uh, but I'll just want to begin with a bit of our vision, or I'll start with my personal vision. Um, so we'll have opening remarks, we'll share with you some of the challenges and of course opportunities for you as technology companies, um, international technology companies in Israel. Uh, we'll tell you about the NAMA bubbles, that's where we're going to all uh, fly together, hopefully in the future, um, and deep dive into our call of proposals. So I'll start with my small vision. Uh, when I think of new technologies, especially this drone uh, delivery technology, and you probably as visionaries uh, have your own vision, I think about waking up in the morning and ordering my cup of coffee via drone to my terrace in Jerusalem. So that's how I see this uh, technology I'm, um, implicating my life. Uh, people have, can have bigger visions, uh, but I like my warm cup of coffee handed to me as soon as possible in the morning. Um, and hopefully uh, by, creating, uh, by creating this ecosystem in Israel will enable drones and commercial applications uh, to implicate in our economy um, and create collaborations in our skies in Israel. Um, at this point, um, I would like to introduce Timothy. Um, Timothy Reuter, are you with us? Uh, the head of aerospace and drones team in the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution to tell us a bit about the International Center um, in the World Economic Forum. Um, Timothy, are you with us? I am, yes. So uh, thank you, Daniela. Um, as Daniela mentioned, I'm Timothy Reuter head of aerospace and drones at the World Economic Forum. Um, and it's a pleasure to be able to join you here today. Uh, you know, this uh, project is a collaboration uh, between the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution uh, at the World Economic Forum and the Israel Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution and Israel Innovation Authority, as well as many other agencies um, and over the, the past three years, the, the forum has become very involved in activities around drones because we believe that it provides an opportunity, especially to connect the disconnected and make sure that those who have traditionally not had access to high quality services in, in a range of areas such as healthcare can now get the same level of service as those that are in the urban core. And I've been deeply impressed by how quickly Israel has been able to move on this front. Uh, when we started you know, collaborating uh, around a year ago, Israel basically had no framework in place 
to enable commercial drone operations. And today they've had literally hundreds of drone delivery operations. And so we really see this as a model for how when all elements of government come together around a common goal, it is possible to move very rapidly to make emerging technologies relevant to people's lives. And our goal here is to accelerate the benefits of drone technology while mitigating the risks in the context of Israel, but providing an example for the rest of the world to observe and uh, potentially follow. So it's, it's a great pleasure for the World Economic Forum to be able to collaborate uh, with Israeli government and industry on this activity. Uh, and I think it will be exciting for all those that choose to engage to be part of that story of rapid innovation. So thank you very much, Daniela, for the opportunity to say a few words. Thank you, Timothy. Um, we are also very happy for the collaboration. Um, I would just um, like to say that the Israeli Center uh, focuses on a few fields. Uh, one of them is really drones and drone delivery uh, in the urban area. Uh, the other one is uh, automated vehicle and the re creating uh, the regulation for automated cars uh, to come uh, to start driving on the Israeli roads. We also deal with digital health um, and AI. Um, and very happy to uh, be part of this uh, project. So how we see it in the Nehemiah Initiative, uh, we'll, we'll of course, um, uh, each one of the players in the Nehemiah Initiative will, will present during our webinar. But I wanted to start a bit with giving you our um, process of how we see things moving forward. Since drones is a very, um, it's not only a technology, but it's also a regulatory issue, which involves a lot of players in the Israeli, especially uh, here in Israel. Um, so it, it, sh it should start as a joint effort. And once we have a joint, joint effort of the main, um, the main players in the field, whether it's uh, Yalon Highways or the Israel Aviation Authority, the Ministry of Transportation or the Min Prime Minister's Office, um, we can, move forward uh, in creating an enabling regulation and creating an enabling uh, and accelerating the ecosystem. Um, we, our, uh, our goal is to create a varied ecosystem of Israeli and foreign companies. We're very interested in, uh, in learning and, and um, implementing new technologies from around the world. Um, as we've seen, once we do have this ecosystem and a lot of interest um, in our drone delivery um, project, we were trying to gain as much uh, resources as we can. Um, this pilot is part of the Israeli government and the Israel Innovation Authority uh, promoting the, this subject uh, with uh, the allocation of, uh, of a lot of resources. Um, and of course, um, then um, once we have the project running, um, we discover through, our, through the demonstration what kind of uh, challenges we're facing and how we can solve them. And of course, by being part of the global network for the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, we would like to take it to a global level as much as uh, learn from the global industry. Uh, our main objectives are, are, first of all, creating an ecosystem, um, creating a large scale economic impact. We're, we're working on a national network, not only on one uh, place and one delivery project. Um, our goal is a long-term goal um, that's supposed to um, affect uh, the life in Israel in the future and help us become um, uh, one of the leading nations in this technology. Um, we would like to create a government framework that would enable this to happen. And of course, an international community, which we hope you to be part of. Um, next, uh, we'll speak Ruth Volkhoff from, um, she's a, a senior um, technology from, for program leader in the Ayalon Highways. Um, so thank you, Ruth, for joining us. And the stage is yours. And just one thing, whoever didn't change his name from Ron Laviv or her name to, from Ron Laviv, Please do, it will help us a lot <laughs> to understand who is uh, on the webinar today. Thank you. 
Hi, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, happy, I'm happy to be here. Hi, Daniela. Okay. Um, one of the special things about our unique initiative is the partners involved in it, each of them playing a major role in pushing this project forward. Um, Island Highways is the governmental company, serves as the operational arm of the Ministry of Transport. We are in charge of metropolitan transportation solutions in Israel and managing innovative transportation projects. And one of our aspect, one of the aspects we are currently exploring in our strategic plan is mobility solutions related to urban air mobility. That's the NAMA initiative. Together with us is we have the Civil Aviation Authority of Israel, the regulator. Israel Innovation Authority, Daniela, and Smart Mobility Initiative um, connected to the needs arise from the field and the health industry. And all together, we make it all happen. Um, next, Daniela, please. Our goal uh, here in, is to deal with all the challenges uh, that developing and implementing a new technology brings up. Um, if it's regulation, um, investing money and resources and pushing technolog technological solutions um, together with the uh, needs from uh, each of the operation, operating um, pilots we have in the field. And together with that, Mixing all together the, the regulation, the technology, and the resources will make this dream become reality. And we started a little bit next, a little bit about the process we, we've gone through. We started uh, less than a year ago, uh, established NAMA Initiative Committee in January, just before the COVID 19 came visiting us. Um, the first uh, call we published was an RFD, Request for Demonstration, um, for, the idea was pushing the drone ecosystem for delivering goods in urban areas toward a commercial application. We had seven groups applying, two of them were chosen to take part of our program. A month later, on the beginning of April, um, we, we saw that uh, COVID-19 is around us and trying to take advantage of the situation, we um, published a tender uh, focusing on delivering health supply and drugs to isolated and high-risk high, high risk population. Um, we had 12 uh, submissions. Eight companies were chosen as our suppliers. And the idea is to deliver goods um, by keeping social distancing and minimizing the interaction between people. Since then, um, as Daniela mentioned before, the, the bubbles, we started on July, the operation of uh, two companies, one in the Hasharon district and one in the North district. Um, more than 250 flights um, and in three hospitals with two companies that are operating in the, in the area. A little bit uh, about the future steps we are having uh, towards building the National Drones Network. We have uh, um, a PQ um, we published uh, just a month ago for the Smart Airspace Control System. And we have this uh, UTM call for proposal. Um, step by step, we will create this uh, national network and uh, have drones around us as, a, as common as cars, I hope. Daniela, to you. 
Thank you very much, Ruth. Uh, now we'll dive into the regulatory challenges. Uh, with us is Amy Weiss uh, from the Civil Aviation Authority. Um, Amy, to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, we actually have three uh, representatives, actually four representatives from the Israeli CAA uh, here with us that represent uh, the three uh, professional arms of the CAA that deal with this initiative. We have um, the flight standards arm, the initial worthiness arm of which I am part of, and the aviation infrastructure arm. We are basically uh, working as a team, although each of us come from a different part of the CAA and uh, uh, joined together and uh, are part of this uh, wonderful, I think, uh, initiative. And I think you can see that within a very, very short frame of time, uh, things have developed from just ideas into actual drones that are flying uh, and uh, doing various things that I think uh, would have taken a much longer time uh, to do. Uh, Israel uh, is a special um, airspace. It is quite dense. There's a lot of activity, um, both civilian and uh, military. Uh, the airspace is divided between um, the responsibility of the CAI and the responsibility of the Air Force. And uh, um, there is uh, very good coordination between both of these uh, organizations. And uh, we are able to provide uh, services to commercial operators to operate in the uh, um, military controlled zones. Um, and this is part of what this initiative is also doing. Uh, we are working very hard, the same as many other um, aviation authorities around the world, to build a worthiness uh, criteria, technical criteria for these operations, try to standardize as much as we can, and move from working with specific solutions to uh, something that will look more like a, uh, a set of rules and regulations that will allow um, operators to work within a, uh, a framework, something that is uh, open and uh, available to all. Uh, we've uh, actually started working on the UTM idea for Israel about uh, two years ago, um, but this uh, new initiative has boosted it really, really, uh, really well. And uh, it looks like we are going to be able to uh, start um, putting UTM solutions like this uh, call for proposals uh, much, much sooner than I think than we uh, anticipated at first. So uh, we are here and um, for any uh, questions you may have with regard to CAA, we are available and also uh, um, through this uh, initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Ami. Um, now we'll dive into the technological challenges and with us is Alpha Lapid. Uh, Senior Evaluator of the Israel Innovation Authority. Morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, the intent of this uh, exercise is to uh, experiment and experience uh, flying together in a controlled, uh, automatically controlled airspace. Um, as you may heard, uh, we do not have an operational UTM system, national or local. And as we build our infrastructure, we are interested in evaluating options, products, uh, approaches, conops, uh, by, by conducting a series of um, evaluations, series of uh, test runs that will run uh, on a quarterly um, pace, two weeks at the end of each quarter, starting late March. Uh, quite similar to what uh, is happening in Reno uh, in the summer, but on on steroids. So we'll have eight of those with the ever increasing complexity. Uh, and by the end of year two, we'll catch up with the rest of uh, the uh, not, civilized Ofer world. Is not joking. Offer is not joking. <laughs> I am not joking. <laughs> Uh, so we are interested in identifying cooperative and non-cooperative uh, um, airplanes. Non-cooperative can be also birds. We have uh, migrating birds uh, uh, 
we don't have autumn and spring, but we have migrating birds coming in the non-existent autumn and spring time. Uh, we would like to localize, identify, localize uh, each airplane, where it is, where it is going, who it be belongs to. That is of the cooperative ones. Uh, we would like to control the airspace uh, uh, separation, vertical or otherwise, prevent collisions and, and identify local obstacles and let the others know about them. Uh, we, of course, would like to cater for emergencies. This country is very used to uh, move from, uh, from peace and quiet to emergency and back over a day. Uh, Medivac, uh, Air Force, uh, whatever. Um, we would like to have a short communication. We will be experimenting with LTE. We will be experimenting with 5G, its quality of service features. There is now as we speak, uh, our major cellular carriers are rolling out uh, 5G services and they will be there in time to experiment. Of course, flying under GPS interferences uh, might mitigating cyber uh, interferences. And um, in addition, maybe not uh, during the first uh, trial runs, uh, also open the uh, long, long distance BVLOS to connect our uh, uh, rural uh, uh, set, uh, um, cities to, to the main uh, economical center of Tel Aviv. Uh, I'll be happier to answer questions later, but I think we covered pretty much most of it. Thank you, Ofer. Um, now we're about to dive into uh, mainly the bubbles. Uh, Dro Ben David our expert on the matter from Ailon Highways, Romatrix company that works for Ailon Highways. Uh, Dro? Yes, good evening. Is that the first one? This one, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're talking about uh, more than a few challenges. First of all, policy-wise, uh, we are running the program, so everybody will be tensed uh, during the whole thing. So we have a special occasion uh, at least uh, every few weeks. Uh, we are uh, following a policy of uh, lowest reasonably accepted risk. By, by that I mean that we go uh, bottom up slowly with a lot of emphasis on safety. Uh, started with uh, VLOS in uh, places which has uh, almost not uh, populated, moving to specific routes in specific bubbles, and then extending to long range uh, flights. As was already mentioned, I'm not sure people uh, comprehend it, but we have only uh, 300 sorties now, flying simultaneously two different um, areas in Israel, two different companies, uh, through the cloud, which we're quite proud of. Uh, next thing will be uh, extending the different activities and uh, uh, extend it in the sense of uh, uh, architecture of wheel and spokes, combining the different hospitals together, and then going further and more and more complicated scenarios. Next slide, please. Uh, the idea is to have in a specific region at least three different AOCs, um, uh, companies flying uh, drones in a way that uh, it will be, it will uh, force us to, to, to uh, mitigate the issue of uh, traffic management. We would like to demonstrate different actors, different levels. Uh, it, we allow uh, the companies uh, um, to fly together with a paying customer, but it's not mandatory. So you, you can all, you can uh, just participate flying for us and not for a customer. We would like everybody to be BVLOS, but we understand that at least for the Israeli companies, it's out of reach currently. Uh, so there are different stages over there. Uh, and we ask the different companies to demonstrate their capability to get a permit for BVLOS within these 24 months. Um, we will fly probably in different bubbles, 
but at first it will be the Chadera bubble, which I'll present in a second, and everybody <coughs> who wants to participate need to uh, familiar uh, himself with it, uh, employing a UTM uh, solution in that specific area. Uh, Ayalon Highways will provide a command center, so to speak, or a service uh, center with uh, three different um, ATC personnel. These personnel will also or are, uh, are invited to compete in this tender. There will be eight sessions at the end of each quarter for the coming 24 months starting March 14. Next slide. Uh, it, the thing is quite uh, cumbersome. So the NAMA initiative, as was already mentioned, uh, um, we have, I think, uh, quite uh, qualified people with the UAV arena and will support it in any uh, required manner. Uh, the, at first, the first bubble starting on March will be Hadera includes three different uh, setups in a sense. One is uh, agricultural, so people without uh, any specific permit from uh, CAA with, re with regard to um, the population density will be able to fly. There are multiple stories, neighborhoods, which at least for the first uh, phase will not be allowed to fly at all. And there are uh, rural areas, and as, as you'll see in a second, they are quite dense, but they don't have any uh, multiple story buildings, which I think that most companies would like to fly there. We chose this place because it's the most convenient one, even though it has helicopters uh, flying uh, routes along it, the Air Force uses it. We have some CVFR uh, routes over there, but nevertheless, it's the easiest one in Israel. Uh, on one hand, on the other hand, Hadera's city or town is uh, cons it consists uh, more than hundred thousand uh, people. So there are there is a large uh, uh, regional hospital, few HMOs, a few malls. So companies will have the chance to find customers for actual uh, deliveries if they would like to do so. At least four months, uh, four weeks prior to the phase itself. Uh, we will make some sort of uh, technological readiness and guidance what we would like to have. This will include all participants. And when I'm saying participants, I mean categories wise, it will be the AOC, the, the drone operators, the UTM, which we refer to as the companies who will deliver the technical uh, application, the USP, which is the service provider, and we have special emphasis in Israel that we would like all commercial drones to be identified via electronic means. And we basically think that by default it will be SIM cards. This is needed because in Israel, every unidentified entity in the air is intercepted and we wouldn't like that to happen. So we, th we think that we will uh, mandate having... Uh, it's not certified RID, but it's approved RID by us in order to participate. So we will not uh, start uh, uh, quarreling with the Air Force. Uh, we will uh, submit on a daily basis, uh, something similar to the, to the actual uh, uh, flight schedule. And according to this flight schedule, uh, the companies will be able to fly. Next slide. That's <coughs> what every company who wants to participate needs to become familiar of. Uh, you're seeing it on the left side, going from south to north is, is the beach to the Mediterranean. On the upper left corner, we're gonna see the start of the, of the red uh, circle. It's the Hadera utility station. Uh, and beneath the large green arrow is the Hadera uh, city or town. The color code stands for, if it's green, you can fly up to 122 meters above ground level, which correlates to 400 feet, similar to the states and the, the European Union. When it's colored with an orange color, it means that you can fly at 40 meters above ground level and you're still cleared from the helicopters and so on. 
And when it's red, it means that even if you fly 40 meters above ground level, uh, the, the uh, separation from the helicopters and other activities is too narrow uh, to be used, meaning that you can't fly in the red areas. On the, if you see this uh, blob of, of red coming from, upper, from uh, the upper side of the picture going down in the middle of it, there is a large, a very large regional uh, hospital called Hillel Yafe, and we like very much to service it if doable. Next slide. This is the ground depiction. And again, you see here on the left side, the shore and upper left uh, corner is the utility station. And what we color coded here for your convenience is the purple polygons, there are three of those. And they, uh, they circumvent uh, agricultural areas. So companies that don't have any permit to fly above uh, people will be able to fly there. You know, in, in the worst case, it might be a hobbyist with, with no means whatsoever. On the red polygons, there are six of those. It's a multi-story neighborhood. And we think that for the first phase, we will probably not allow to fly there. And all the area in between, which is the largest uh, in area, is, uh, as you can see, it's not, it's not a rural area, but it's a lower density of population. And we think that most activity will probably take place there, um, probably mandatory an FTS system in order to fly above people. And I think that's about it. Thank you very much, Dor. Um, um, next, uh, our speaker in Bao Bloom, our program manager from the Growth Division. But before, I would like to thank the Growth Division. Uh, for enabling this uh, project to go forward. Um, um, if I would like to introduce uh, Shomrat Schultz and uh, Zvika Goldsman, um, they're our um, team. And also I would like to introduce to you at this point, Ran Laviv and Meital and Yosef and Chagit, and thank you for, uh, for this webinar. Uh, you've been very great, helpful. Um, and that's before uh, <laughs> we go into our last session. Uh, also, I would like to say that you're welcome to, uh, to ask us any questions, wh uh, whether it's here on the chat or email us. Um, so feel free. Um, uh, and thank you, Inbar. Now we'll go to Inbar. Inbar, you're on mute. In Bao, we can't hear you. You're sorry. Muted. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, just um just a minute. Okay. Hi everyone. Um thank you so much for joining from all around the world. Uh today we'll uh we'll talk a little bit about uh all the details uh from the Israel Innovation Authority about uh the UTM uh, pilot program. Um, so first of all, a little bit about the Israel Innovation Authority. As you know, the high tech here in Israel, uh, some 90% of the total employees and 46% of the Israeli export. Um, we see uh, that the government has a role to eliminate barriers, to create new growth engines and overcome market failures. And this project of the UTM is exactly that. Uh, and, and, you know, we're doing check, check, check for the three uh, points of role that we see for the government. Uh, we have here in the Israel Innovation Authority about 3,000 applications for R&D funding uh, every year. Um, we help the single entrepreneur into large companies with conditional uh, loans, which are very convenient. Uh, we have 140 employees and 180 uh, professional audit auditors uh, that help us. Um, so in the growth division, we have the R&D fund, which we help companies um, to create prototypes and uh, in the earlier stages from TRL uh, one till five. And we have a pilot program, uh, which we create a win-win situation between the government and government entities and startups. They want to start and try their, uh, their technologies, which are in a higher stage from TRL six to eight uh, and try them on the field. Um, 
in this uh, in this situation and relationship, the government get a, gets a taste of innovation and understand what the technology that's needed uh, in uh, what the technology that's needed for the for for the companies and helping them uh, to in everything they need. So, for example, here again, uh, we can see that how. Um, many entities have joined together in order to help you create uh, the UTM. Uh, the, the, the call for proposals will end by uh, November, in the 4th of November at 12 uh, p.m. if uh, you want uh, um, to, to apply. Um, so why are we doing it? You know, I think this is uh, the most important. Uh, I think each one uh, talked about and had his own vision. You know, uh, Daniela has started the, web the webinar and said uh, she wants to, in the future, get her coffee. So we're getting ready for, for the future. Uh, Timothy has said how he wants to connect the disconnected and I'm, uh, I can really connect uh, to, this, to this saying. Uh, and of course, here we look at the market. You know, we're not doing it. Uh, we're doing it because we see the business potential. We know uh, that the global UTA market is estimated to be $1.9 billion by 2024. Um, so our goal, as, um, as we said, is to demonstrate TRL 7 till 8 drone technologies in unmanned traffic management. Uh, the criteria we're looking at is coexistence of multiple drones flying over crowded urban areas, uh, innovative air mobility networks using drones, and of course, improving the transportation in Israel and around the world. We see the UTM as a new, um, as a new system, an ecosystem that can, um, that can really help with conjunction and, and, help, uh, and help Israel and this technology all around the world. And of course, create sustainable companies uh, in Israel based on innovative Israel technological solutions. Um, so what we'll be, we'll have a, a common playground uh, during two weeks in each quarter, starting March, 2021. Uh, multiple operators will build Vivolos capabilities are uh, welcome to join. And of course you are as well. You're, we're asking you to join and we're happy to help and have an, you know, any questions you have after this webinar, we can still uh, keep on the conversation and help you join us. Uh, it's very important for us to, that you will be a part of our project. Uh, we're looking for eight demonstration sessions uh, in heterogeneous environment with increasing com complex complexity. Um, and the funding, I'm not sure um, you can be funded because you, since you're not an Israeli company, but you can uh, for sure uh, get in touch with other Israeli companies and uh, we can uh, help you connect you to, to those companies and help you with, the, and they can get funding uh, for the demonstrations uh, for the two weeks and the briefing and inquiry meetings that will be after that. We will not cover adoption. Again, we're looking for technologies that are, uh, that are in TRL seven till eight. Um, so that's very important. Again, seven till eight, I'm, I'm emphasizing it here. Um, uh, we, want to see, we want to see companies that are ready uh, ready for these demonstrations. Um, so the potential companies we have, as I said, uh, we will fund the Israeli companies, but we want you to come as well. Um, I can tell you that uh, Offer have said uh, uh, we are on steroids, but this is really like the startup nation. You know, people here work very fast. We have it in our DNA. Um, you know, we were all in the army, and um, I think you would learn a lot from joining us to this project and uh, create great connections. Um, so what are we looking for uh, in our funding? So first of all, innovation. We're not just called the Israel Innovation Authority. We are looking for innovation. We want to see that there are challenges in your, in your project. We want to see business potential and of course to help the Israeli economy. Uh, specifically in the pilot program, we're looking for the need. Is your capabilities really needed? The TRL seven till eight and the quality of the site. So you have the best site uh, uh, you can find. Uh, all of the the regulatory of all the regulatory entities have come together to help you create the site, um, and and you are uh, welcome to join. Uh, what criteria we will look at? So for uh, uh, the coexistence of mul multiple drones, ability to move commercial cargo. Um, it's not exercised in this pilot, but we do want to see um, you know that you have a business potential in the end. 
uh, you know, Corona time, so transportation solution without physical human contact. Uh, and we will do it all by the international standards, say uh, US or Europe. Uh, so um, I think it's a great uh, opportunity to join um, and to be ready towards, uh, towards the standards. Uh, and of course, flight over people and BVLOS capabilities. Uh, something important, um, so the flight data must be recorded in a black box and we may share it uh, later. Danielle, do you want to add to that? Um, I, I would just like to add that uh, we would be very happy um, and we're open for foreign companies to join our demonstrations, uh, whether it's uh, with funding or without funding. Uh, our purpose is to learn about the UTM system and how to work together um, in the aerial space. Um, that's why we will welcome all of you, even if uh, you're not applying for the color proposals and for our funding, uh, please contact us if you're interested in joining our, our demonstrations um, in one of the um, one of the um, the programs starting from March. The first demonstration will be in March um, this uh, 2021. Hopefully you'll be able to fly by then and visit us without any quarantine. Okay, great. So um, thank you, Daniela. So again, uh, if you will apply with an Israeli company, there will be an evaluation from the Israel Innovation Authority, from a governmental evaluation, and also a regulatory evaluation to see that you are actually ready for, for uh, the pilot program. Here you can see down all of our uh, great uh, regulators that are in this project and are willing and want to help you. Um, so if you apply, uh, this is uh, some of the great support that you'll get. So 20 to 50 percent approved uh, uh, of the pilot expenses. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we, we can finance adjustments in order to be ready for administration, but most of it will be for the demonstrations. And there is no limit to the amount of the pilot funding request. Uh, and the regulatory support uh, that you as well can get it uh, if you, you know, and you're welcome to join us. Uh, so the deadline is the 4th of uh, November uh, at 12 p.m. Uh, the IP that uh, will be in the program, of course, will be yours and will be of the company. We're not, um, uh, you know, it's yours and uh, we want you to use it. We want to, uh, we want uh, the UTM uh, to help all around the world and uh, that's it. So uh, you can, uh, uh, we can keep on speaking and I will also, uh, Daniela will send the presentation uh, later uh, and we're here to help. Um, and if you want, we have great other uh, programs in the Israel Innovation Authority. You're welcome to, to join us to our newsletter uh, also with international, uh, international companies. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Inbar. Um, now we have a few minutes left for Q and A. Um, so please feel free if you have any questions, whether it's uh, through a chat or just uh, unmuting yourself and presenting yourself and what you'd like to know about the program. Hi, my name is Brent Clavon. I'm with Anrit Technologies. We're a UTM provider. Thank you for the presentation. I really appreciate the, the detail. My question is in regard to IP, intellectual property, and how it's going to be handled during these demonstrations. Uh, I'm not, it's not clear to me if there will be something that is developed and then retained by an authority of some sort. So can you please elaborate on how IP will be handled? Um, uh, I sure. think I can okay, take sorry. it. Sure. Um, in, in, in general, the Israeli authority does not own the IP. The IP is owned by the company that is generating that IP. And usually we insist that it will be owned by an Israeli entity. In a pilot program, the IP that is generated is usually the adaptation, the particular adaptation to the local market. And in that case, just as well, it will. It is much preferred that it will be owned by uh, a local entity. Just the part that is the local adaptation, of course, to the local regulation. Ami, would you like to elaborate 
and there's other I, I just there. wanted to say that with regard to any information that's provided to uh, CAI to uh, create a permit or uh, uh, provide as an applicant, this is uh, uh, only used to uh, prepare any permit that's required and the information isn't shared with anyone that isn't involved directly with this program. Um, and uh, the employees at CAI are, are required to uh, keep it um, as uh, proprietary information. They, they cannot share it, they're not, not allowed to share it with anyone. And also regarding information about uh, that we gather from the demonstrations, our goal as a uh, um, as a state and as NAM initiative and then vision authority is to learn um, about the technology, about how we can adjust better and what we should do in the future. Um, so we also would use this information in order to adapt and, um, um, and create new systems and creating the regulation. So that also uh, is supposed to help us uh, in the future in implementing the technology. Uh, does that answer your question? It, it does, uh, but um, I suspect there will be some more detail that is in the solicitation that I can review. And, and, and if you don't mind, this is still Brent from ANRA. I have a follow on mm -hmm. question. Are, are there subsets of offerings that can be provided by the technology companies? I, I see that there's also an interest in remote identification. And so, for example, if we do not have a presence in Israel and we're unable to provide funding to support pilot demonstrations, now would there be an opportunity to lend or provide our technology for remote identification, which does not require a physical presence in the pilot program in Israel without a partner? I would say definitely, but it has to be discussed uh, offline. Uh we are really welcoming any technology that is mature and proven to 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 get us uh, on on track faster. Thank you. Any other questions? It's your it's your chance. Don't don't be shy. Uh, but of course, we are also offline, uh, and you will get all of the details later. You know, it's still early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, well, if there are no other questions, I'll give you one more chance. Um, please feel free to contact us, any of us. Um, we have our emails. Um, thank you very, very much for joining and waking up early in the morning. Um, and we hope to, oh, um, and we hope to see you participating in any of our projects. Um, and we would like to learn from you as well. So hope to see you in the future. Thank you very much.